Hi guys, my name is Majid. In today's video, we're going to be doing a comparison of three set-top boxes, including Amazon Fire HD, the Roku 3, and of course, the Apple TV. Now, this video is intended for viewers that are in the market to buy a set-top box. Uh, basically, we're going to take a look at the specification and the capabilities of these three boxes. So hopefully, it'll help you decide in which box is right for you. So taking a look at the Amazon Fire, uh, we'll see that it is one of the biggest out of the three that we're testing today, but I think it's one of the best looking. It's a full rectangle or square uh, in terms of how you look at it, and it pretty much it has a rubber coating all around, so it feels really nice with the Amazon logo right in the center. Um, it's pretty solid how they have designed this device. At the bottom, it's fully coated in rubber, so it's gonna sit anywhere nicely and uh, pretty much not move at all. So it has a lot of friction when it comes to the bottom of this. Uh, taking a look now at the Apple TV, it's pretty similar. It's my second favorite in terms of design. As you can see, it's pretty similar in terms of the shape as well. It just has rounded corners. It has another coating. It's not a rubberized coating, but it's like a matte plastic coating and it does pick up fingerprints, but it's very, very easy to clean. Again, you have the Apple logo at the top. Other uh, sides, there's completely no inputs, just like the Amazon uh, Fire, but they do have a gloss finish, um, which is, you know, depending on your taste, you may like it or not like it. Uh, I think it's okay, it just picks up a lot of fingerprints. At the bottom, it is fully rubberized, so it won't move at all, whatever you put it on in terms of your set-top boxes, so that's actually really good, just like the Fire. Um, and it does have a good amount of weight to it. Now, taking a look at the Roku 3, it is the smallest in terms of form factor out of the three, but it is a little interesting the way they've designed it, you know, just to give it, I guess, a more premium look. They've kept a shiny gloss finish of the plastic. On the side, it has the Roku tag that is pretty normal in all the Roku devices by now. It's made of cloth. On the bottom, uh, there's not so much of rubber grippiness, but they do have a ring going around the device that gives it a bit of grip so it won't slip or anything like that. So that's actually pretty good. So they're all pretty good in terms of grip at the bottom. So let's take a look at the ports, uh, starting with the Apple TV. It has a power input, HDMI port, a micro USB port, optical audio, along with an ethernet port. Um, the Roku 3 is pretty similar, DC in, um, ethernet port, HDMI, port, micro SD expansion slot, um, and it does have a reset port right there if you need to reset your device along with the back. There's a USB in case you wanna transfer any files that way. Uh, the Amazon Fire has a power input, HDMI, optical audio output, along with ethernet input and a USB. So they all have pretty much the same in terms of ports for usability. Taking a look at the internals of the three devices, you'll notice that there are some key differences. Uh, starting with the Amazon Fire HD, it has a quad-core processor with two gigabytes of RAM. The Roku 3 has dual-core processor with only 512 megabytes of RAM. And the Apple TV is a single core processor with, again, 512 megabytes of RAM. Now, they all have wired and wireless internet. Uh, the difference being the Amazon Fire and the Roku 3 have uh, dual band internet with MIMO technology, while the Apple TV only has a dual band uh, without the MIMO technology. So essentially what that means is with the Amazon Fire HD and the Roku 3, you'll be getting better internet signals in terms of upload speed and download speed. So the content that you're gonna be watching on your device uh, would be a lot smoother in terms of playback and you'll be able to access it faster because it has multiple antennas giving the signals and uh, being able to receive the signals as well. Now all three of the boxes also offer quite a few apps that you can use to stream video, um, including Netflix, and YouTube and uh, Hulu Plus and Crackle, um, but there are some key differences. The Amazon Fire HD and the Roku 3, again, are on par with the number of applications that you can use to stream video. The Apple TV comes a little bit short. It doesn't have too much support for third-party applications, but then again, it is tied to the Apple ecosystem, where if you have videos or any other Apple device at home, you'll be easily able to use that and access that content onto your Apple TV 
Now, taking a look at the remote controls, all three of them come with a small size remote control, Apple having its signature aluminum unibody remote control. Uh, the Roku has the biggest remote control out of the three of them. That's because it doubles as a gaming controller as well. Uh, the Roku 3 is able to play some games, and you can use the onboard uh, controls to actually control the game movements inside. Uh, and it works really nicely, uh, kind of like the Wiimote. It has some gyroscopes built inside, so you can use motion gestures to basically control what you're doing we were playing angry birds with it and it's pretty fun um, and it actually works really nicely the controllers have a nice feedback so you'll be able to just quickly switch from you know watching something to playing games now lastly looking at the Amazon Fire HD's remote I thought this one was the best remote out of the three of them it's designed really really well and it's the most comfortable it fits in your hand really nicely uh, plus it has a good good weight ratio uh, for its size uh, plus the buttons are just really easy and convenient now the Amazon Fire HD also offers a gaming controller which you can pick up for $49 and this is something that you can actually use for a dedicated gaming experience now taking a look at the user interface of the Amazon Fire HD, you'll notice that it is a very clean layout. On the left side it has a list of everything that you can access in this device, uh, going top down from home, movies, TV, watch list, your video library, games, apps, photos, and settings. And at the very top it has a search function which you can use in conjunction with your remote control. It has a microphone. Uh, if you press the button it'll listen to you and whatever you say it'll search in uh, the online library. And and if it finds it, it'll bring it up for you. So it's a very easy way to search for content. And um, browsing content on this console is actually very, very easy as well. It just makes it really nice and um, convenient for you to look for whatever you're finding. Now, taking a look at the UI of the Roku 3, it's actually... Uh, kind of odd it has a really simple home layout but then when you want to browse the content you have to go into the channel store and from there you can access everything from movies to videos to uh, TV shows and music and sports and everything else like that but it's just a little odd how they have categorized it and put it in this section um, it should be you know in the home screen and easy to access which it is but it I don't think it's as nicely laid out as it could have been but again you have a lot of content that you can access through the Roku box lastly looking at the Apple TV I think it has one of the best layouts in terms of fluidity uh, moving from page to page uh, it's actually very very quick um, also it has an app kind of layout so you'll see everything on the home page from movies tv shows music and everything else uh, and then from there you go in and it has you know all the categories nicely laid out uh, thumbnails are very very nice and it's it's actually just i think most effort has gone into making it user friendly um, and if you have an apple ecosystem in your house you'll be able to enjoy the apple tv the most just because you can access all your content you can use your iPad or iPod to uh, airplay some a lot of the stuff and if you have an iTunes library you can access it through this device as well so it gives you uh, a lot of benefits if you have an app Apple ecosystem at your house already uh, not only that you have pretty much all the latest movies and you can pre-order them uh, put them in your wish list whatever you like so you have a lot of content available to you and uh, it does work really nicely even though it has a single core processor in the device uh, the only thing it's lacking is uh, the fact that you can't do any gaming on here which is a downside because there's so many applications that you get from Apple's App Store and if you have an iPhone again you'll know how many applications you can download it's the biggest in the world so it'd be nice if they had some sort of capability to play games or at least with an update uh, or something like that all right guys so thank you for watching the video if you liked it make sure to share this video with your friends it helps the channel out tremendously and of course add the video to your favorites also we have a facebook page where we upload all our videos um, you can stay up to date with our current uh, videos so make sure to check that out and give that a like and thanks again guys for watching and we'll see you next time